Hi, um, so thanks for joining us for a little chill video. Um, this is one of those little get to know you uh, segments in which um, my name is Eddie V. Hill uh, with Reno Film Collective and I am joined with Eric Fleury, composer, musician, and audio engineer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I brought you on basically because you have a unique perspective from that composing side and you've worked with us and uh, tell us a little bit about your background and um, your experience with Reno Film Collective kind of in a nutshell. Well, uh, I'm from Reno and I've been playing music now for about 15 years and I started out playing the trumpet when I was a really, really little kid and played all through high school. Um, when I got to college, I was a music ed major and I got through about two years of that and I realized it just wasn't what I wanted to do. And I switched to a performance and composition degree because I really liked writing music. I've always loved movies. And so, uh, and I always listened to, you know, like John Williams, Hans Zimmer, you know, and I, I love all those, those film composers because it's a unique medium. It's not like it's not like typical composing where you know, it's kind of through and you're not there's not as many parameters, you're not restricted, but in film music it's so unique cuz it's all about like situational awareness. And so when I switched majors, I started taking an audio engineering course and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And that's when I started writing film music. Like I just started out by going online and you know pulling off scenes from YouTube and things like that and I actually rescored the music just just to try my hand at it and see what it was like and I was getting good feedback for it and as I was walking around campus one day I saw I know this story yes but I'm gonna tell it again because it's a good story uh, there was an article in one of the one of the university's magazines that had you, you in it. I'm pretty famous. You are famous. <laughs> and it said Reno Film Collective, and I'm like, oh, cool. These look. These guys look like. These guys look like they want to make films, and I didn't know anybody else who was doing it. I tried looking around campus, but nobody was really wanting to do it. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if they have a composer. Right. Which we uh we we have some. You know, there's people that dabble, there's people that have composed music before, but being that you were kind of focused on that, that's where you're going, was really was really enticing, and a lot of people have been able to benefit from that in uh, getting film scored. But let's, yeah, so how many, I guess this uh, little next step is how many shorts have you composed for, for let's say the group slash, I'll say like even likes and dreams counts, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me think. I did likes and dreams, pulling strings, close to homeless, Olympia. Olympia was was a long one. That one took a while, but it it turned out really good at the end. That was a lot of fun. And I'm working with Matt right now, and then I'm gonna start your next one here pretty soon. So I think that's six. Six. Not bad. So how has it been working with? Reno Film Collective and in, in the in the way that kind of directors change and kind of feel the genre changes like every project has a different feel and different guidance how's how is it jumping from project to project and getting to work like that it's really cool because you know I'm, I'm always looking to try my hand at new things I don't want to get fixed on one genre in particular or one style right now because I still feel like I'm there's a lot to be learned and I, I'm just looking for like my sound right now. So as, as long as the shorts are coming in different types of different ways or shot differently and different feels and moods uh, is opportunity for me to try composing in different ways and trying out new techniques. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. A lot of, time it, a lot of times it doesn't. You gotta, you find the right one and then, then, you, then, then the rest of it kind of comes. Can you tell us a little bit about composing and some things that people believe about it that might not be true? Like, do you have to know how to play every instrument, or what? How does that work? I don't say you need to like. In a nutshell. Yeah. Um, well, composing is 
You know, it's a unique breed of people because we're not dedicated instrumentalists. You know, we try our best to know and understand all the instruments as best we can. Um, so I'm, while I myself, you know, I play the trombone and other instruments, like, and I've dedicated a lot of time to that, that doesn't help me know how to write for strings or for guitar or piano. So you try your best to listen to as much music as you can. I think the best way to learn is to just listen and learn what other composers are doing. And then you can sort of piecemeal from other composers. And that's how you can start to, you know, develop your own sound, your own uh, writing technique. But you do need to do some studying. You know, I had to do some orchestration and learn about what the ranges of instruments are, what styles they can play in, you know, if I know what pizzicato uh, versus uh, Argo means, you know, what does that mean? Do I want it? I don't know what that means. You know, like, do I want them to pluck the string or do I want them to bow, you know, or something like that. Um, but on, on the other side too, being a film composer specifically, is you got to know all the audio techniques too. You got to learn about miking, you got to learn about mixing, mastering, all the production that goes into it. A lot of composers these days are doing that now because of technology. So. You just gotta, you just gotta listen to a lot of music. It sounds about right to me, but I mean that is a lot to listen to. Um, let's see. As far as uh, getting back to some more Reno Film Collective specific stuff, can you tell us maybe one or two moments that have stood out to you when composing pieces, just in general, either a lesson that you learned or. Uh, something you took away after a project on what you wanted to move forward with after that experience? Well, I'd say the f my first really big experience was pulling strings. I love it! Because it happened so fast. I, I think I came on like two weeks before you were going to release it. And I came and we met at Blue Well Coffee and you were like, oh, hey, okay, so I'm, you want to write music? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to, but when do you want to release the film? And he said, oh, like in two weeks. And my heart just went, Oh my God, <laughs> I was like, how am I gonna? Fortunately, it was winter break, so I had the time to, to sit down, but I sat down for a good, good, good week and just hammered it out. I just did it, I don't know. I don't, I, that's the thing. I don't remember how I do things, right. which stinks. Cause as soon as I get, you know, you, you would think your first instinct is to just write it down when you get like a good idea. But I, I get, I think so fast I don't do it and that's frustrating. Well, I mean, that's that's what we learn as professionals is you just kind of jump in the seat and do your thing and yeah. But oh, I was going to say no, I love pulling strings for sure, especially under that time constraint like mm. No, I ha I don't have any uh you know, no bias, but whatever. <laughs> and maybe the second one was probably Olympia, the day that uh Paul invited me out to the shoot. Shout out to Paul, Sean Ward. What's up, Paul? Because um, I had never been on a shoot before. I couldn't go to the Pulling Strings because I came on so late. And when Olympia rolled around, Paul was like, yeah, come on out. And so I went out and I spent pretty much all day out there in the warehouse or whatever. And I was like, this is, it was so cool seeing it from that side. Because being a composer, you know, I always, I, I can't score this film until I usually get the, the final edit or something close to the final edit because then I, I have to tailor the music to that. And so I never usually get to see the shoot. So I try my best to go to all the shoots so I can see and meet some of the cast and see how what everyone's moods. I, you know, I talk to a lot of people to try and get a feel for what they think of the film and whatnot. So it helps me understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so final question, I do want some advice to be given here in reference to directors because you're you primarily communicate with the directors of films when you are dealing with let's say a new director you haven't met them before they've never dealt with a composer before which any new person you're going to interact with is going to come from that background so what advice do you have for a director Communicating with a composer for the first time, what should they have prepared? What should they have prepared for you? Like, what, what, what would help you through the process? Well, the, the director-composer relationship is, to me, what's the most important thing, because that's what makes my work easier. Um, I would say, for me personally, what I 
always like to get in my hands is definitely a script. I'd like to, I, I like to see and read the script before, you, sh you know, usually when the project first goes. Well, th this is even before you sign on, technically, right? You oh, want to, yeah. yeah. So maybe then um, be open-minded to what you want musically. Um, there's more than one way to get what you want musically and know that uh, music is not a limited thing. You know, we're always ex I'm always experimenting, I'm always trying out new things, and I'm looking for ways to try new things. I don't like to do things the same way twice. Okay, so get Eric a script and be open musically. Okay, so let's move into, do they need to have an idea of the sound prior, or is are you fine with waiting until post-production for that, or how, how do you see that? Um, I guess it, it can go both ways. You know, if, 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 the, if the director knows what he wants, then... Or she. Or she, if he or she knows what he wants, I'm not biased. Uh, then I'm totally open, and you know, as a director, it's it's your it's your project, not mine. So my job is to tailor what you want out of it, you know. And so if you know what you want already, then that's what I want to work with, because your vision is the one that's, you know, he's a director for the re for a reason. Hey! <laughs> so if you know what you want, then we all should do our best to, to cater that need. But if you're open to trying out new things and willing to let me as, as the composer, you know, come up with something new and try out different ways, then I'm open to doing that too. And most of the time that usually happens in post, so. so I'm trying to wrap this up here, um, but I guess one quick tip. For somebody who doesn't know what they want, coming to you, and you, you, you've agreed to score the film, you like the script, you're in post-production, and they don't know what they want. One tip for helping them find out what they want. Know what the mood is. Because if the mood helps, if you know what the mood is, then I can, I can do my best to maybe find a song or find a, find a style that, that might suit that mood. Or I might come to you with three or four different moods or sounds and then pick one and then once we know what we want then I can work with that and that's what we have so shout out to Morgan behind the camera today whoop 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 um yes yeah, so this was a little chat between uh, me Eddie V Hill and Eric Flurry, our composer so yeah thanks for watching and um see you next time bye <laughs>